Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully you can hear me over the noise of these fans. This is the first player DK D4. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the first player DK D4. This is a ATX chassis and it comes completely stacked out with RGB straight out of the box. Now this case at the moment in the UK costs around about £28, which is absolutely phenomenal value for money, and it's certainly giving cases like the IONS a run for their money. You can check those out from the links up here. But this is a different kettle of fish. Now let me just disconnect the cabling so you can actually hear what I'm saying over the noise of the fans. That's much better. Okay, so this is the DKD4 case, and this is a very budget option for those of you that are into RGB bling, or just want a nice high airflow case for very, very little money. So taking a look at it, it looks the business, it really does. Um, again, for under £30, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a case which looks as nice as this for that kind of money. And if you can find one, please do let us know in the comments. I'm always open to see new cases and new options in the budget market. So I suppose, as per usual, we'll have to give this case a good tour, go around it, then I'll give you the pros and cons and reasons why I would, or maybe I wouldn't, actually buy it. So first off, I should actually mention this case was sent to us by one of our lovely Discord members. Uh, thank you very much for that, and we'll put some links in the description if, uh, if you want to join our Discord, and you can join in with all the fun and games on there. But anyway, I'm digressing, so let's take a look at this case. So first of all, as you can see, it is a ATX chassis, so suitable for ATX, Micro ATX, or ITX boards if you wanted to. But really, I would say ATX is going to be the best option for here, especially as you've got this lovely tempered glass side panel to show off the insides. So starting with the tempered glass panel, nice panel, slight smoke tint to it, which is nice for hiding those slightly more unsightly items, but still allowing lots of light in and giving you a good view. A nice touch which I saw, which is quite unusual actually, is on the glass there is actually the first player logo etched into the glass. At first I thought it was actually some mark on it, but it turns out it was their logo, so... Yeah, kudos for that. The tempered glass side panel is held on with four thumb screws, no captive screws on this one, as you probably expect, and the glass itself has no handles or ledges or anything, it is simply a piece of toughened tempered glass. And as you can see, there is a very slight smoke tint to it. So moving into the interior of the chassis, now it's actually pretty standard layout, not anything here really untoward or that you'd not expect. The basement section has got this nice blanking plate on the front, which again is a slight upgrade over those IONS cases that we've seen where this was all open, so that does actually add some appeal. Also the basement section is fully ventilated and there's options on there for mounting additional fans or mounting a hard drive if you wanted to, or an SSD, something like that. There's lots of punch outs in the bottom for running cables through, but again as with these other cases you do ideally want to put your power supply in first before you start trying to run the IO cables through your motherboard, otherwise the power supply simply will not fit in. For cable management and wiring we've got lots of options, there's plenty of punch outs on the bottom and on the top, and also you've got this trunking area for running cables through, and also there's cutouts so you can run cables through the inside, which is a really nice thing to see and makes cable management very simple and very easy to do. One downside, as with the other cases of the similar nature, there is very, very minimal room between the actual back panel and the motherboard tray. There's only about three millimeters, maybe four millimeters gap there. So if you are using a power supply with slightly thicker cables, you may want to look elsewhere or alternatively go for a power supply with those kind of licorice style cables or flat cables. That will make wiring very, very much easier. So everything actually inside looks A-OK. -okay. No issues, no problems, I can't see any potential problems. The only thing I would say possibly is on this top section, you have got a ventilation area and you've also got a removable magnetic mesh and you can easily add fans onto the top, no issues there. Two 120mm fans will fit in there very easily. 140s you'd have to do some modifications with. Definitely no room for a radiator. The top section is way too close to the top of the motherboard to allow that. And even saying that with some motherboards with larger VRMs or with larger RAM cooling strips, you may find fan fitment in the top section a little bit tricky. Personally, being that you've got three fans on the front and one fan on the rear already, I would say this is more than enough and will give you some excellent positive pressure. Moving around to the back of the case, again, very, very standard layout here. We've got a 120mm RGB fan included as stock. We'll go on to the RGB fans towards the end because there is a big issue with those which really should be addressed but we'll get to that a little bit later. Anyway, so a bit of movement there on the fan, so you can take it up and down a little bit. Not a great deal of adjustment on there. 
There isn't a great deal of width to this case, so 120 mil is the maximum you'll get in there. You've got these cutout for your IO panel, and again, it's all the usual things, nicely rounded off edges, so no cut fingers, that kind of thing. The PCI Express blanking plates are all the captive ones, so you will need to bend those to remove them. Ideally, if you can, try and bend them and move them before you put your motherboard in, so just line it up and see which ones you need and which ones you want to keep. There aren't any additional ones included in the box to replace if you bend one out and you need to replace it, so do make sure you take out the right ones, otherwise you'll be left with empty slots. The retaining mechanism is very similar to most of these other cases where you've just got a sliding mechanism there. I did find actually when this case was delivered that this section was actually bent. It is very flimsy and as you can see there's quite a bit of wiggle room there so do be careful with it and it's not really designed to be used on a regular basis for putting systems in, taking them out. I think if you do a lot of that kind of thing this is going to start to show wear and tear very quickly. At the bottom you've got your standard mounting area for an ATX power supply. Again, no issues there. There's no additional extra bits of metal that needs to be bent out of the way to install a power supply. So yeah, very happy with that. Moving around to the back panel, we've got thumb screws, not captive ones. Again, you would probably wouldn't expect that on a piece of this kind of price. And it seems to be finished very nicely in this nice white gloss. The panel has got quite a lot of flex to it, but once it's in place, it is pretty sturdy. So this is the back section. Again, very, very similar to the IONS cases, the KZ10, KZ8. I would imagine they all come from a very similar manufacturer or ODM and are just modified slightly to suit the individual companies. We've got a lot of punch outs, as I said earlier, for running cables through, so you've got no issues there. I did notice actually at the back, there is actually a little cable mounting area here. So for your 120mm fan, you can actually clip the cable in there. So when you're trying to put your motherboard in, it keeps the cable out of the way, which is a nice little touch. And I think more case manufacturers should try and integrate that in their designs. So anyway, back to this rear section, there are cable tie down points here, 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 and a few up the side there. But realistically, because of that panel being so close to there, you don't really want to put anything on this channel if you can get away with it. Ideally, you want to use this cutout section and the lower area here. Now, coming down to the lower area, you can't help but notice it. Yeah, we've got a ton of Molex connectors. Now, unfortunately, the Molex connectors are for the included RGB fans. And they are addressable RGB fans in the fact that they don't stay on a static color and they do color change. But unfortunately, there is no option to change the color patterns whatsoever. They are completely independent and they run on their own. Also, because they're running on the Molex connection, they are at full blast all the time. So there is no way of adjusting the fan RPMs or the color. Just thought I'd mention that. One thing I did think of doing, because these are particularly noisy fans, and you'll probably see from some of the cutaways or B-roll, that this does get quite loud. And we did measure decibel ratings of in the 50s, which is quite high for a desktop case, especially if you're in close proximity to it. If you're a headphone user, obviously this isn't gonna bother you at all, but if you've got this case nearby, it is quite noisy and is distracting. So the options are, Either remove the fans entirely and replace them with quieter fans, such as the Arctic ones, which we've used previously, or obviously fans of your choice, or something with PWM or some kind of DC control, they would be favorable. But these do look really nice. So it's one of those things where it's a good selling point because it looks amazing, but it sounds horrendous. And what you could do if you're slightly more adventurous, because of the way the Molex connections work, you could actually cut a connector and actually rewire it so rather than being 12 volt, it runs on 5 volt. This will reduce the brightness of the LEDs, but it also will reduce the RPMs of the fan to, I would hope, more acceptable levels. Again, whether you do that or not is entirely up to you. It is a little bit fiddly and obviously would void any warranty on either the power supply or potentially the case itself or the fan connectors, so do bear that in mind. But it certainly is an option. Moving on to the cabling, so we've got connectors and all our cabling, which is all nicely blacked out, which runs down this cabling channel quite easily. Weirdly, there are extra connectors in here which shouldn't really be in there. On the top panel for the I.O., which we'll show a little bit later, there is an additional switch for, well, it seems to be for controlling RGB lights, which I guess is potentially for a different model. So you've got effectively two reset switches, one for RGB control and one for resetting the PC. Unfortunately, this case doesn't have any options to plug into a controller because quite simply there isn't one. So why that is included, I'm not entirely sure. But again, it's there if you decide to change the fans and put in a different RGB controller, such as the up here ones, which you can check out also up here, 
those would be ideal and then you'd have full PWM control and also control over your RGB lighting either from your motherboard or from that reset switch. Also in this section we've also got some hard drive mounting area so you can put a three and a half inch drive in the bottom here and also a two and a half inch drive on the top if you wanted to. A little bit limited on space in there if I'm completely honest this is a relatively small power supply I've used a contrasting power supply just so you can see the room that is available in there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite tight back here, so you will have to be a little bit cautious with your cable management, otherwise it's gonna be like the overstuffed suitcase when you try and get the side panel back on. Also of note is the power supply is actually resting on essentially what is bare metal. It is painted metal, but it's bare metal, so there's no rubber grommets or any rubber padding underneath the power supply. So if you've got a slightly cheaper power supply or a relatively high spinning RPM power supply, you may find that resonates through the rest of the case. It isn't too bad because the feet on the case are quite nice and have rubber stabilizers but again it would have been nice to see just some rubber pads added just to stabilize the power supply a little bit or isolate it from the rest of the chassis so moving on to the front section so this is the business end this is what most of us are going to be considering or looking at when buying this case so we've got some very reminiscent designs here of uh, some of the corsair cases and also the co-link case the observatory where we've got this design underneath and also it takes some ideas from the Meshify case as well with this angled front mesh, which some people may like, some people may not. I actually quite like it. It's gonna be a nightmare to clean, but a quick wipe over and it should be absolutely fine. The plastic on the front is uh, pretty substantial, quite thick, and the front panel's held in really nicely. An odd inclusion, in my opinion, is there's ventilation holes down the side, which are completely unfiltered whereas obviously the mesh on the front does act as a relatively good filter. With the case fans on, I did notice there is a considerable amount of airflow coming from these fans, although you would expect that they are fully operational at 12 volts, so they are pushing a lot of air. Um, yeah, it's loud. <laughs> what can I say? It is loud. It looks nice, but it is loud. So let's take the front panel off so you can get a better look at the fan orientation and also how the mounting area works. Now, a fantastic thing to see is the fact that the front panel is completely detachable. There's no wires or anything coming through it, which I do prefer over things like the IONS KZ08, which had a captive IO section at the front, which is a bit of a nightmare. At least with this, nice and easy to take off, and if you do need to wash it or clean it, it's quite easy to do, or vacuum. So yeah, pretty good. As you can see from the fans, so we've got these 12 volt Molex powered fans. Uh, yeah, These are the uh, HZX model of fans from first player gaming, so if you did want to change them or add them, God only knows why you want to add them, but if you wanted to, you can get them separately. There is a RGB strip which runs all the way around the outside with the RGB LEDs exposed. It is what it is. Essentially, you are getting a very, very cheap case and the fans are kind of included free of charge. Essentially, I think most people in their right minds would probably take these fans out and replace them. Unless you can bear with the noise, they are noisy. As I keep on saying, they are a very noisy fan, but they do look great, so there is that to it. The fans themselves are mounted on the front panel. Unfortunately, you probably couldn't get them to mount behind. Again, it is very tight, like it was with the KZ08, KZ10. Because of the cable management channel, it is quite tricky to get cables through there. But if you wanted to, you could take them off and put them behind, just obviously take into consideration the cabling and the cable management and you should be fine. So looking at the basement section, now weirdly I did find that this one for some reason has no filtration on the power supply whatsoever. Whether that it was an emission or it was missing from the case or whatever, I don't know. It wasn't included, normally you'd expect to see one of those removable meshes in there, but there's nothing here. There's two screws. Removing those two screws allows you to slide out the hard drive cage, so that's quite nice and easy to access. The side section here for the basement is kind of riveted in place, so you can't remove that very easily. But yeah, nice rubber stabilized feet, They're quite a nice touch, and they've got a chrome finish on them, which is pretty decent. Moving into the top of the case, as I said, we've got this removable magnetic filter, which we're expect to see, and you've got the nice honeycomb mesh here, which uh, I always prefer over anything else. That does tend to get the best airflow. For IO, we've got our power button. There is a slightly recessed reset switch. There is a slightly raised switch again for controlling RGB, which you may or may not be able to do. Headphone and microphone jack, two USB 2.0 and a single USB 3.0. So not a great deal there, but certainly it's functional and does what it's meant to do. Would have been nice to have seen two USB 3.0s and maybe lose one of the 2.0s, but still mostly functional. I would imagine most people using these ports, maybe a USB stick for file transfer in the faster ports and in the slower ports, maybe a USB headset or a USB microphone, which doesn't need that kind of bandwidth. So 
No issues there, but would have been nice to have seen a slightly more featured set. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up our first look at the first player DKD4. Overall, I think it does look fantastic. It's just the noise of those fans, for me personally, is a little bit too much. For some people, maybe absolutely fine. And the high RPM is a little bit distracting. And in fact, even though this is a relatively cheap IKEA desk that we're using, I can actually feel the pulsing or the resonance through the case through the desk, either that or we're having some kind of earthquake. No, I'm pretty sure it is from the fans. But anyway, there you go. It, it looks really nice. It is super cheap. It's got a lot of flexibility for ATX or micro ATX or even ITX boards if you wanted to. Cable management is going to be a little bit testing, but certainly feasible, as we've shown in the KZ08 and the KZ10 models. So you make up your own minds. Let me know in the comment section what you think of it. Is this a budget wonder or is it something for the uh, recycling bin? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.